你怎麼會說完了你們太沒錯了你們太沒錯了你們太沒錯了你們太沒錯了你們太沒錯了你們太沒錯了你們太沒錯了你們太沒錯了你們太沒錯了你們太沒錯了你們太沒錯了你們太
Okay, everyone okay, agree? I just share you my share you my one of the experience. Uh, there's one time same lah, uh, there's one student I put Friday I think. And then there's one student say uh, they cannot finish, they have a bug, so they want to solve it. Then they discuss they say okay, okay lah, I stand to Sunday. So what happened then? I say okay, I extend to Sunday. And one of the students they email me. He emailed me lah. Uh, he said, Sir, why you, you extend like this? So it's not fair to to toast so complete early. Uh, we do, we put a lot of effort to finish on Friday, but then you can extend. So it's not fair, so, so it's uh, put a quite, quite so called. Uh, say, uh, the whole email is like blaming me why I stand the, 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 the assignment. I feel a bit uh, sad, la. I mean, I feel a bit. You know, I extend for, for students, but then he go and say, okay, why you extend, you are not fair. I cannot simply win a stand up. So unless everyone agree, then I stand. Otherwise, uh, it's fixed and fixed. Is everyone okay? Then okay. Yeah. You don't email me. Yeah. Don't, don't say okay, okay. I'm not fair. Yeah. Okay. So um, congratulations. You have additional two days to suffer. <laughs> I thought you you like Friday's finish, but then you can enjoy your weekend. So we now you have to stop. We cross uh, four days. Friday. You know why lecture always avoid put on the Saturday Sunday? Because uh, Saturday Sundays there will be a lot of student email to lecture. So this how so that how uh, then weekend is most of the time lecture are not really check the email. Then the student will plan the lecture why didn't reply my email this and that. So so we try to put on the weekday. So there's some reason lah, but anyhow. Uh, if I see the email, I, that I probably will reply you lah. If I didn't see, I miss out. Then I, I will reply when it, uh, when I see the email, I check the email. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So uh, let's move on to the new topic, which is expert system. Expert system is among all the chapters, thirteen chapters. I feel is the simplest one, it's the easiest one, because it's mainly uh, depends on the logical thinking, uh, rational thinking. You have a, a common sense, then you probably can understand this very well. Okay, so before we move on, this uh, I I don't like to stand stand beside him. Very tall. Me too. Me too. You you also. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, have a quick recap on the uh, last week image processing. Okay, so last okay. lesson we learned about image processing, uh, chapter ten. Testing, test, okay. So, um, image processing is a process to uh, convert uh, continuous data here. Let's say we have an actual scene, then we performed digitalization, right? Digitalization. Uh, to convert this uh, continuous data into a matrix of pixels. Okay, so this is a pixel. So, uh, can you tell me what are the four properties that you have learned last week to represent one image? We have uh, four uh, important properties of the attributes to represent one image. Yeah, Brandon. Uh, RGB. RGB, okay. So, uh, RGB is time for maybe number of channels. Okay, if you have a three channel, it means RGB. So, it's a color image. So if uh, one channel means that you remove the color information, you have a grayscale image. Okay, very good. This is one of the properties. <laughs> coordinates. Okay, coordinates is referred to a spatial resolutions. It's referred to uh, the how many pixels uh, in per inch. Normally we use uh, pixels per inch. Okay, it's referred to how many pixels to represent the whole image okay the higher uh, the of this uh, resolution the pixels per inch means that the cur the clearer is your image the more detailed is the image okay very good the third property huh? text index index okay index is uh yeah index is referred to the position okay index refer to position it's something that's uh, out of syllabus but yeah, very good. You can you know what is index, so it's referred to the positions. You simply talk. 
Oh, intensity. Oh, you, you, you say intensity. Okay, okay. All right. So intensity. Okay. So intensity refer to the brightness. So we have an intensity resolution. Okay. So uh, it depends on the number of bits. So normally we use eight bits. Uh, normally. So if eight bits, it means that you have uh, two hundred and fifty six levels. Okay. And then the last properties. Which is not very really important. Huh? Opacity. Okay, very good. The, the, the transparency. Huh? Opacity. Transparency. Okay, very good. So these are the four, uh, the main properties that represent one image. So after that, we have we know we understand what is the image. Then we have uh, cover the process of image processing right we have an uh, image acquisition image pre-processions image pre-processing okay image pre-processing and then we have a uh, uh, feature extractions after feature extraction we have a uh, notice uh, the, the representations of your data and then lastly we have a train the models and uh, to recognize the object so that you have a process uh, in someone's life but last week we main, mainly focus of uh, image pre-processing Okay, we focus on uh, image pre-processing and we learn about the image denoise. Okay, so we learn about the means average, the average filters, we have seen the median filters, and also we, lastly we have uh, as cover discover one more is called Gaussian. Okay, Gaussian filters. Okay, and last uh, and then next we learn about the morphological operations. Logical operations. How many types of morphological operations? Anini. Yes, Jenny. What type? How many types of uh, morphological operations? Remember, so you have a gap, then we fill up the gap. Four types. Very good. Name it. Can you remember? Erosion. Huh? Erosion. 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 Huh? Okay. Erosions. Erosion. Okay. So we have uh, erosions. It's mainly to string the object, right? And secondly, <coughs> dilation. Dilation. Elon Musk. Dilation. Elon Musk. Dilations to enlarge the objects. Yeah, mainly. And then we have a uh, opening and closing. Okay. We have a uh, closing. So uh, closing is a process to uh, combining the dilations uh, followed by the elosions. Opening is the elosions followed by dilations. So this is very important. So you probably have seen how do we uh, enlarge the object or, or so-called erode the object uh, using the comparison of your sustering elements. You have a sustering elements, you have a pixel intensity, you compare, okay? I think this is the summary for what we have actually covered last week. Just okay, a minute. Okay, feeling good? Yeah, yeah. yeah cover. Mm -hmm. Alright, so uh, that's end for the image processing. If you are interested, probably you have you can explore uh, more towards the uh, image processing by yourself, YouTube. Okay. Uh, probably not sure you can uh, you can uh, enroll for the one of the elective course image processing. Okay, so let's move on to the new topic. Uh, it's called expert system. So expert system in general is a system provide the expertise or the advice to the user. Okay, so what an expert system? So expert system is just a computer program. Okay, which uh, simulates decisions making a uh, ability of a humans in a particular domain. Okay, so what is actual system? It's just a computer program that simulates the human's uh, decision-making ability 
in the specific domain uh, in a specific or in a particular uh, a particular or specific domain okay you just you can just treat this expert system as um, a recommended system or a chatbot which uh, to get the input from the user and to uh, infer through the series of rule based system and to generate the output to you okay so for example i have a build a very simple uh, expert system it's called skin disease diagnosis system here mm -hmm. okay so this skin disease diagnosis expert system will uh, uh, require the user to key in the symptom let's say okay, let's say i have a symptom called inflammation before I approach to the doctor, right? Before I approach to the doctors, uh, I can actually have an early diagnosis first at home. Let's say I have an inflammation and a red itchy skin, so I already know that hey, I have a red itchy skin and it's a kind of an inflammation. But probably uh, the skin disease I have uh, infected. Then okay, so this system told me that okay, I probably have this uh, eczema. Okay, so it's a very simple expert system. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you ask me how to build it, it's very simple. It's just based on the if else statement, if else rules. You have this symptom, this symptom, then this is the output. Uh, you have this, 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 and that. Is that. So how to build it? Uh, basically, we have to uh, 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 so-called discuss or interview with the expert. For example, the doctor in this case. So we have to collect all the information. Let's say the symptoms together with the, the skin disease. So this is the symptom, and then this is the disease, and so and so forth. Okay, and then we do a matching. We have these symptoms. Then this is the output. If you have this symptom, then that will be the output. Okay. So how many of you you are really uh, invest do an investment? Anyone? No. Plan to learn. Huh? Plan to. Uh, if you are planning to uh, uh, do some investment in the stock market or maybe um, so called gold, silver. Then you can probably uh, refer to this trading room uh, platform. This is the best, I feel is the best platform for you to get some advice or uh, to filter to get the stock or to get the the, the stock uh, that you prefer. How to use already? Uh, let's say here. Okay, let's say you like to uh, just go through first Nvidia. Okay, let's say you like to, uh, uh, you have some strategies, but you want the uh, trading view to filter some stock to you. Okay, you can have go to this stock uh, screener here. Okay, and um, select. Okay, select your your so called uh, your preference. Okay, technical chart, or you would like to uh, filter based on the financials. What is the the EBDAs? Okay, you select. Then it will show you all the stock that according to your preference. You can select one. Okay, so this is one kind of expert system to provide the the so-called the, the stock that you prefer to you. Okay, so this is one of it also to, to provide the experts about the skin disease. Uh, maybe this one also one of the expert system uh, to calculate the GPA uh, based on your uh, marks and also the credit server. Let's say this course uh, BACS two zero zero three. Okay, so if you will score about eighty marks. Okay, how many credits are we for this course? Two or three? Three. So you can drag three GPA, so you definitely score four point zero. Then you can add subject two. What subject you taking this semester? This is more calculated. Formal method. Formal method. Let's say formal method, lah. Maybe you score fifty marks. Three hundred. How many credits are we for formal method? Three. Okay, three. Then you calculate GPA. So your GPA drop to three point three. Uh, this is one. This is a kind of expert system. Uh, you don't know what is the GPA, so you can build a, a expert system to uh, help you to calculate all this. So this is so called expert system. So how to build it is it's not that difficult as long as you have the rules, then you can build the expert system. Okay, it's all about logic. It's all about uh, rational. It's all about uh, the rules. Okay. All right. So uh, throughout these two hours, uh, you will uh, you will so called explore what is the expert system, what is the architectures, the elements, the components in one of the expert system, and how do we design and develop the expert system. Okay, so assuming that you are sick today, so where you want to go, you will definitely go to the 
hospital right you seek the advice from the doctor so doctor will use the knowledge the experience the education so what he had learned in the class a skill to uh, diagnose you right but however there are some limitations of uh, having these uh, traditional doctor consultations where you may need to travel to the clinic or the hospital to, to wait for the to, to wait for the doctor you have to spend some time right spend a lot of uh, so-called money cost to diagnose sometimes the most uh, worst one is uh, let's say the doctors so-called no sometimes you know doctor is still a human so what if let's say the doctors uh, fatigues tired then you probably miss diagnosis uh, based on your symptoms. Yeah, this happens. Look at this. What happens in uh, I think uh, US, USA. Yeah, uh, few few years ago, the doctor left the scissor inside one of the bodies during the operations. Yeah. So this quite frequently happens. Yeah. Why? Because uh, doctor is still a human. Uh, doc human will tend to make mistakes. Okay. Human will uh, so called tired uh, tactics. So we need the expert system to assist, uh, to assist the doctor make a better decisions while they feel tired or even some of you, you are introvert, you don't want to uh, see doctor first then you can use the expert system to have an early diagnosis for you Okay, so how many of you are scared of uh, see a doctor? No, I'm scared to pay for doctor huh? I'm scared to pay for doctor You don't want to pay for a doctor, okay so this is one of the reason why uh, there is more and more expert system in the market because to see a doctor is not cheap nowadays to go to a clinic uh, you see one time I think a consultation fee is about 80 ringgit then you take some medicines it costs you 100 hours it costs you 100 hours so if you have an expert system you just key in the symptoms you have an early diagnosis first okay then you want to further uh, advise then you only approach to the clinic okay so as I mentioned, expert system are all supported by the rule base. Okay. The expert system is uh, actually a computer program. It's actually uh, using the rule base okay. to simulate the decision making ability in a particular domain. For example, it can be the medical field, it can be in the finance, uh, it can be any, uh, let's say, uh, Car failure, okay, mechanical, engineer. So, uh, when we talk about the rule base, it's actually support by if L rules. I think this one you are better than me uh, You have write a lot of rules, most of the course. So, uh, this if L rules, we have a uh, two components here. So, the first part is called premise, conditions, or antecedents, right? Then the then part is uh, known as the consequence, conclusions, or actions. So throughout these the two hours, I will uh, use uh, different terms. Uh, sometimes I will use a uh, premise, sometimes I will use conditions, uh, sometimes I will use antecedents for the if part, and sometimes I will use action or con conclusions for the then part. Okay, they are referred to the same terms. Okay, so we have uh, five different type of rules, uh, variables here, uh, relations, directive, heuristic, recommendations, strategies. So what is the recommendations? Recommendation is just uh, advice. So if you look at this uh, example, if the season is autumn, the sky is cloudy, and the forecast is freezer, then my advice is take an umbrella. So recommendation is a, a type of rules that just give you the advice. You you, you can uh, it's optional to you follow or not to follow. It's just a recommendation. Okay, you want to follow or not to follow is your choice. But I just recommend to you. Okay, if you have this situation, then you can take these actions. Okay. So we have a second type of rules called relations. The relations, uh, relations shows the uh, relationship between the input and output. If the fuel tank is empty, what happens? Your car is dead. That's it. Okay. If fuel tank is empty, then the car is dead. That's it. So if you have A, then what is to happen? B happens. It's so relations. So we have a third type of rules here. It's called directive. Uh, directive is quite similar to recommendations uh, rules but however directive is um, a mandatory actions you must take this action if the car is dead the fuel tank is empty you must okay the, the action is you must refill the car it's a mandatory but the recommendation is more towards uh, uh, wise uh, it's optional you can take things advice or not it's up to you but directive is more towards you must take these actions okay and then we have a, sec a fourth type of uh, rules, it's called a uh, strategy. 
uh, strategy is more towards step by step guidance here. If you look at this example, if the car is dead, then the actions, what is the first step? You have to check the fuel tank first. After you check the fuel tanks, okay, complete, then you go to the second step, you check the battery. So it's a step by step guidance. Okay, so how to uh, cook a chakwin tea? So step one, you have to put the oil. Okay, second step, you have to growing, growing. Okay, so this is so called strategy rules. Okay, step by step guidance. So we have a last uh, type of root cause, heuristic. Heuristic is more towards finding the root cause. If you have this spill is liquid, then you can test or the pH is less than 6, the smell is when it goes, so what's probably is this object. So you try to analyze. So what the root cause of this liquid is actually acetic acid. Okay, if you are looking for the root cause. Okay, is that okay? So can you provide me one recommender one recommendation rules. Close to your daily life. You recommendation algorithm. Huh? Give, give me one example for recommendation type of rules. If you want to chase a girl, then you earn money first. Uh, okay lah. <laughs> okay. You sound very horny. Eh? Huh? <laughs> chase a girl. Why? Why must relate to a girl? Ah? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, good. Okay, so it's a recommendation. Ah. it's not directive. Ah. It's not directive. Ah. you must you must earn money. It's a advice. Oh, it's an advice. Okay, good. So let's see this one. If cough present is true and the firm has blood stain, symptom of TB is true. So this one is relation, recommendation, directive, strategy, or heuristic. The first one. If the cough present is true, then firm has blood stains, the symptom of TB is true. Is it relation? Uh, definitely not recommendation uh, because you are not uh, give some advice. It's not directive because you are not asking the, the, the patient to uh, do some things. Uh, strategy, no, it's not a step by step guidance here. Yes. It's either heuristic or relations. The answer is. Yes, heuristic. Yeah, yes, the answer is heuristic because you try to uh, heuristic, try to uh, identify what is the root cause. You try to find, oh, you have this symptom, cough present. Then you have this symptom, firms has burst in, or then you identify the TB is true. So this is heuristic. Okay, very good. If diagnosed is TB, then describe anti-TB drugs. So is this a recommendation or directive? The second one. If diagnosed is uh, TB, then you have to take this medicine. It is a directive or recommendations. Directive. directive, yes. You you have to take the medicine, right? You have this disease, then you definitely have to take this. You go out for twenty minutes just because of coffee. Okay, the third one is symptom of TB is true, then go for chest x-ray. So this one is recommendation, right? It's optional. So yeah, whether you go and uh, scan the x-ray is not, it's optional, it's not a must, but to take the medicines is a must. So this is a directive. If TB is true, then cough present is true, this is relation. Lah. So it shows that if TB is true, then you definitely will cough. So it's a relations. Okay, so the first one is heuristic, the second one is a directive, the third one is recommendation, the last one is uh, relations. Okay, so let's look at the overall structures of how expert system is being built. So to build an expert system, you need these uh, four parties. 
The first one is called Domain Experts. So as I mentioned, if you want to build a, 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 the so-called expert system to diagnose a skin disease, the first thing first, you must interview the expert from the skin. Right? You must get the doctor advice, you must interview the doctors, get the recommendations, get the so-called uh, experience, uh, his or her experience. So we have a domain expert that you probably uh, from a, uh, is an expert from a certain uh, field, certain domains. And then uh, probably we need a, a knowledge engineer to communicate with the domain experts. So this uh, knowledge engineer will interview the domain expert, will collect all the information. It's not only collect the information from the domain experts, so knowledge engineer need to design what are the UI to use, uh, how to uh, build the system, okay? and then how to maintain the system and how to test the system. So after you collect the data, you need to communicate to another programmer here. So the programmer will start to write the code, right? like you. So write the code, for example, if else statements, everything, communicate here. So after that, we need another uh, party, it's called project manager. So this manager is not going to do any coding. It's just to make sure that this entire project is run smoothly. I have to make, make sure that every, everything is uh, follow the timeline. Okay, so to build this expert system. So after you collect all the information here, then we start to build the expert system and this is how expert system look like. So in the expert system, we have a five important components. Okay, the first component is called uh, knowledge base. So this is a, a so-called uh, areas that to store all the if-else statement. Okay, if you have this symptom, then you have this output. So we store all this knowledge, you collect the information from the expert, then we have to convert all the information into the FL rules and store all the FL rules inside this knowledge base. It's normally it's a, a permanent memory. It's stored inside the permanent, uh, permanent memory. Alright, then after that, we have a second component here. So contains the main knowledge of type of rules. Then we have a second uh, component, it's called uh, database. So this database is not the database that you learn what SQL or SQL uh, or SQL database. It's not the, uh, the database that you learn. So this database is referred to a place to store the observations that key in by the user. So just now I have shown you this one of the simple example here. Okay, so you can assume that whatever I key in here, so this this symptom will store inside this area. We store inside the database. It's also known as the fact of the observations. Okay, I repeat again. So whenever I key in here, so this is actually the input from the user or the symptom. So this symptom is observable. So it's a, a something is a, it's a something happens already. So it's I will call it as a fact. So we will store all the fact, the observations inside this database. Okay. And then after that, we need this inference engines. So this inference engine is one of the important components. Okay, used to do the matching. Okay, start to do an inference, do a matching between knowledge base and also your database. Okay, so after do the matching, then you need to go through another NLG. Uh, this one is actually a NLP uh, modules. Uh, this is explanation facilities. Uh, try to uh, convert the output to a more meaningful or explainable or human language uh, back to the user and definitely we need a user interface now. but in the example I'm showing show you just now it's not involve any uh, NLP because it's uh, just based on the rules then we just uh, let's say okay, in this. okay so it's very simple it's very straightforward if you have this symptom, then this is the output. It's not involve any uh, NLG or NLU. Okay, so we just give you based on this input, then you have this output. So some of the good expert system will probably give you uh, human understandable language or the sentence, like the, the ChatGPT. Okay. So what are, the, what are the components inside NLP? NLU and? Okay, so these are the, the comments, the five uh, uh, comments, uh, components uh, that inside the expert system. So I repeat again, you have a, a knowledge base. 
So this knowledge space used to store all the if else statements. If else then uh, statements. Okay, and then after that we have a second component called a uh, database. So used to store all the observations. Uh, and also the fact from the user. Or you can just assume that this is a user input. User input or the symptom. Okay. So after that, we need to do the matching between the the fact here compared with the knowledge base using inference mm -hmm. engines. So normally, inference engines compose of two uh, modules here. Which is not inside these slides. Normally, we have a, a two uh, sub modules. It's called uh, inference mechanism. So, how do we compare? How do we do a matching between this module and that module? So, we have a two uh, very famous uh, uh, techniques here. It's called uh, forward chaining, and then we have a second techniques to uh, compare the the these two modules called backward channels. Okay, so beside the inference mechanism, we have another modules uh, called as uh, conflict less solutions. Okay, it's a method to solve the conflict. So I will I will explore uh, discuss uh, what is a uh, conflict less solutions in more details later. Okay, so after that. Uh, after we do a matching, then we have to go through this uh, NLP, uh, which is a uh, explanations uh, facilities, and then finally we have a UI like user interface, and then user. Okay, means that the user will start to key in some symptoms, and this symptom will store inside here. Okay, and then your inference engine will start to uh, start to perform its work to do a matching between this and this based on your inference mechanism and the complex reference that you predefined earlier so after we find the solution or we find the output then we will generate a proper sentence back to the user okay so this is the overall process flow for uh, expert system or you can think the expert system is just one of the recommended system plus the chatbot okay any questions so far should i no question now. or no understand. No question. Okay, good. Okay, so you can just assume that we have uh, we have some uh, observations here. Okay, let's say I have some observation. I keen I keen the I keen some uh, symptoms. I have this symptom called um, A, B, E, and D. Okay, A, B, E. So this is my, uh, let's say, fact. Okay, if I say I key in this one. So what we'll do here is we will, do, we will, start, to, uh, we will start to do a scanning. Uh. Okay, so is it Y? Is it rule number one uh, correct? We don't have Y, we don't know. So rule number one, we will skip. Rule number two, X, B, E. So do we have X? We don't have X here. So rule number two is not going to fire us. So we check rule number three, X, true, yes. We have an X, we have an A here. Right, we have an A. So given the A, so it will give you the X. Lah. So it means that the X will add into this fact here. Okay, and then we will repeat again the whole process. We will start uh, rule number one. Do we have Y here? We don't have Y. Okay, we will skip rule number one. We go to rule number two, X. We have an X. Uh, we have a B. We have an E. Yes, so this three will give you Y here. So this Y will store inside another fact. And then we will re repeat the cycles again. Look at the rules number one, Y and D. So we have a Y and D. So finally, it gives you Z. Then we can conclude that uh, based on these observations, uh, this is our conclusions. Okay. So it solely depends on the rules. Uh, it depends on the rules. Okay, so uh, these are some of the properties or the characteristics of one uh, a good expert system. Uh, normally, a good expert system, uh, the field is very narrow. We just specific the, the domains. Let's say you would like to build an expert system for the skin disease, then you just focus on it. You, you probably don't want to have an expert system that can uh, 
cover very wide uh, areas. Then you need to have a thousand or even millions of rules. I'll try to uh, specify your domains. Okay, the speed is one of the very important factors. You probably don't want to have an expert system to generate the response uh, in in five minutes and the delay time. You you want the instant response, right? So the speed, the speed is very important. And we, you probably want to have an expert system uh, which is able to explain, uh, to have an explain capability. Uh, it's not only to give you, uh, okay, uh, the, let's say this one, the dimensions and read each. So if I enter, so you probably don't want just, you, you probably want to have uh, more information uh, about what is eczema. So this one is not a real good example here. So it just show you what is the output eczema. So a good expert system should be able to uh, to provide more information. What eczema? What are the treatments? Okay, and so and so forth. Okay. So this is one of the examples uh, uh, where uh, Mr. Uh, I could say is an expert system that built by my uh, one of the SPIT students. So where the user can the take the photos of the skins okay and then to answer some questions okay to answer some questions so we have some predefined rules like huh, in the in the store inside the knowledge space so whenever user key in the all the information we'll store inside the uh, database or the observations then we have some inference mechanism to do the matching So after that, then uh, the user is able. Oops. So the user is able to monitor uh, their skin disease uh, severity from week, week to week. Okay. So it's not only that the user can also see the summary, uh, what they consume for the past week and this week, do a comparison. So this is just a basically a comparison of so what you have actually consumed and the week three is not consumed in the week four so you you know so what 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 kind of food that you have to take care or you have to actually ignore or you're sensitive to okay so what is the advantage or what are the advantages for one of the expert system it is uh, normally represents a natural language and also the the, the structures uh, to build a to support to build the expert system is very uniform as you can see from the example that I show you just now, to build an expert system is uh, very simple. So you just need to interview with the, do the with the expert in a certain uh, domain here. Okay, so then you have to convert all the conditions and the, and the output into the rule base. You just store inside one of the so-called module. So this so-called knowledge space. Uh, you can use if else statement, no no problem. So you can use uh, if the if x is a uh, this 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 and this, then y is this one. So you have to collect all the the condition and the diagnosis from the doctors to list down all the uh, to list down all possible conditions uh, as possible here. Then after that, you should have a module here. So this module is very simple. This module is to refer to the inference engines. Okay, the the one that I highlight here is to do a matching between the knowledge base and also the database. Okay, just do a matching. Okay, if the rules the rules is inside the knowledge base then one okay now after that we have uh, some main functions so this main function is specially to ask the user to key in uh, this one is to key in, uh, to key in the input so whatever the key in the input i will store it here okay i will store it here then i will ask the um, ask, ask the machine to do a matching compare the input together with the knowledge base Okay, is it difficult? Not difficult. Just build our code, then you are able to build a simple uh, expert system. So this is the advantage. Compared to the machine learning, compared to uh, to the let's say the pub searchings, uh, it's quite difficult. Although you understand the theory, but it's quite hard to transform the the knowledge in the theory into the coding. But for the expert system, it's very simple. So as long as you can understand, it's very com uh, makes sense. Then you can just transform into the else statement. Okay. Uh, Separation of knowledge from its processing. Yeah. 
So I can see uh, I separate the knowledge space. So this is one module. And then the diagnosis or the inference engines is another module. So if let's say you in future you want to build another expert system, you can just recycle the, this code of uh, this, this segment, other code segment into another expert system. Uh, in future you like to build another uh, skin disease expert system, you can just uh, re recycle, uh, you can just reuse the code. Okay? So dealing with the incomplete and uncertain knowledge. So some good expert system is able to deal with the incomplete or uncertain knowledge. So what is uncertainty here? Uh, uncertainty is something that you are not sure about your input. For example, if I ask you, uh, are you hungry? Yes. Yes. If you're hungry means that, okay, if let's say you have a rule called uh, if, if hungry, okay, then it's shit. Okay. If I ask you this question, if you are hungry, then it means that yes. If yes, then you eat. Very simple, right? But what if I say uh, you answer, uh, I'm partially hungry. I'm not very hungry. This is so-called uncertainty. If you have these uncertainties, then you should have another algorithm to, to sort it out, to figure it out, okay? This one is yes. If hungry, yes, then eat yes. If yes, say you have some uncertainty, if partially hungry, if not really hungry, it's called, called uncertainty. If you have an uncertainty, then you have to use uh, some techniques. For example, you have an uncertainty, sir. Then you have to use some uh, a nine bias, the Bayesian theorems, or maybe you can use a certainty factors. Or you have to use uh, another technique called fuzzy logic uh, to to solve it, to solve the uncertainties first. Uh, some good expert systems should have these uncertainty solutions. Uh, some normal expert system, yeah, uh, no, but most of the expert system come with the uncertainty solutions. Okay, so what is the disadvantages of the expert system? Um, of tax relations between the loose, although the individual productions are relatively simple. Okay, look at this example, what is effects of this? So this is one of the uh, limitations. Assuming that you have one scenario, expert system is designed to determine whether a loan uh, should be approved or not, based on a certain rules below. If the applicant's credit score is above 700, then we approve the loans. If the applicant's income is above 50,000, then we approve the loans. If the applicant's debt to income ratio is below 0.3, then we approve the loans. But if let's say you have these situations, okay, you have a situation where uh, the credit score is low, okay, the credit score is low here, uh, which is low, but however, the income is high. So, should we, should we approve the loans or not? So, there is some not transparency between the rules, okay? So, to build an expert system is very simple, but however, to uh, make it clear the relations between rules to another rules is another kind of uh, uh, challenges, okay? Like in this case, you have uh, two rules, one is okay, one is not okay, so what should be? Should be approved or should not uh, approve the loans. Okay. So it's not able to learn, right? So uh, as you can see the the example that I show you just now. So there's no machine learning modules. It solely depends on the L rules. Uh, from time to time, we have to keep updating the the domain. We have to keep updating the knowledge base. That's all. It's not able to learn like the machine learning. So machine learning, you pump in the data, so it becomes smarter and smarter. But the expert system. The main limitation is not able to learn. There's no machine learning modules inside the system. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, so uh, I will stop it here for a while, about 5 minutes. Okay, then after that, we come back to corporate resolutions. It's one of the very important uh, subtopics uh, in the inference engines. Okay? So, whoever wants to go to the toilet, yeah. Okay, for those who just uh, come to the uh, lecture hall, uh, the, the, the assignment submission will be extended to Sunday, uh, Sunday 11 59 pm. So I already asked the class rep to uh, broadcast the news to, to the team members. 11 59 uh, Sunday. Thank you, sir.
rash solutions. It means that uh, in your inference mechanism later, uh, in your inference engines later, you have to uh, come up with one conflict rash solutions. You have to tell the expert system if you have a two rules which are correct at the same time, uh, you must set a rules first. Okay, you must set some solutions uh, which one to choose. So there are many solutions to solve the conflicts. So these are the common solutions that we have here. It's called first come first serve, the highest priorities, the most specific rules, data most reasonably enter, meta rules, and many more. So what is first come first serve? If we apply the case uh, just now, first come first serve is where as long as the first rule is uh, matched, the condition is matched, then we straight away fire the rules. Then we will ignore the rules two, rules three, and we remaining. We will just take the first rules. For example, in this case, the traffic light is orange, then the action is stopped. Then we won't see the rules number two and three anymore. Okay, so what is higher priorities? Uh, highest priority is depends on uh, the user. We, we, we have to set which rule is having the highest priorities. It's assumed that in this case, I, I, I will make assumptions, or I will have to preset this. The rules placed at the bottom has the higher priority compared to the topmost. Okay, then if I set the bottom one has the highest priority, if I have the same situations, then I will uh, fire the rules number three instead of rules number one. Why? Because we go to rules number one first. Traffic light is orange. Yes, it's correct. But however, I had I had already set the rules that placed at the bottom has the higher priority compared to the previous one. So since the rules number three also correct, so I will take the rules number three. This is so called highest priority. We have to set this. Which one is having the higher priorities? Okay, so this one is set by the user. Normally, uh, we set. You can set even the, the highest level have the highest priority, or you can set the lowest level having the higher priority. So in this case, if I set the lower level have the higher priority, rules three will be higher. Okay. So most specific rule is referred to the longest matching strategies. It means that the more observations match with the knowledge base, then we fire that particular rules. Okay. Assuming that we have this case, rules one has four legs, mammals and bugs, it is a dog. And then we have a rules number two has four legs, mammals, it's an animals. And we have this fact getters of the over observations. So which one we should fire? If you look at the rules number one has four legs, it's correct. Mammals is correct, bug is correct, right? Rules one is correct, right? And then if you look at the rules number two has four legs, also correct, mammal is correct. So both rules are correct. There's some conflicts. So which one uh, to fire? If we choose more specific rules, then we should fire rules number one because more conditions match uh, in the rules number one. Okay. So most recent data is depends on the time lock. It depends on the time. Uh, it's a bit complicated. Uh, we don't have examples here. Uh, maybe I come up with a simple example. Assuming that you have a smart home. Okay, you have a smart home. So we have a uh, rules la, uh, rules number one. Uh, if the user go and set some input, the temperature, this is about the aircon, uh, aircon. So let's say the user set the input, then uh, we should release the cooler air or reduce the cooler air. So we have some action here. Okay, maybe we have a rules number two. If uh, there's no user input which is more than uh, three hours then maybe we set uh, environment environmental mode okay or safe or safe mode so let's say we have two two uh two uh, rules here now the user can set early morning the aircon is on then user can set uh, uh 21 degrees celsius so if the user set 21 degrees Celsius, so this rules one is fired. So we will set 21 degrees Celsius. Okay. So but however, let's say this is nine early mornings. So let's say time pass is now is one a.m. or one p.m. It's already uh, four hours. So uh, let's say this is 12 p.m. Uh, 12 p.m. It's already three hours. So no more new input from the user. So rules now at the same times fires. Rule ones and rule two. They are correct. Both are correct now. Mm -hmm. But however, if you use this this uh, most recent data, the moment the user key in this twenty one degrees Celsius is the latest, is the latest input. 
okay it's the latest input so rules one you will always fire so we will ignore rules number two we will always fire the rules number one because it depends on the latest input from the user it depends on the timestamp the latest input that's stored inside the database then we fire the rules okay and then last one we have a meta knowledge so meta knowledge is about the uh, we have a knowledge inside the rules so before we build the any rules here we have to have a further analysis on the particular rules okay if we look at these uh, scenarios assuming that you have an expert system diagnose the red recipe repository illness so it has the following rules so if the patient had cough fever and so and so forth you have a three rules here okay assume that you have the input is called cough and fever you have two symptoms here if you look at this cough and fever uh three all three rules are fires right cough and fever the second rule is also cough and fever the third rule is also you have cough and fever so the all the three rules are correct so which one to fires so if you use meta knowledge then you probably have to consider about the confidence level of the rules uh what what in the past historical data uh, which rules are most commonly uh, fires or maybe you have to study the behavior of the the user or the patient you know that this patient has the history of smoking uh, then we probably fire rules number one so meta rules is where we have to analyze it's not only use the rules but we have to analyze the confidence level of the rules we have to analyze the behavior of the user uh, take into all these considerations to fire a particular rules okay so for meta rules uh it's, it's quite quite complicated uh, it's quite difficult to build so normally uh we use uh, this this three uh, first come first serve highest priority or most uh, specific rules these are the three common uh, solutions uh, to solve the conflicts okay so let's move on to the next one so we have uh, as i mentioned we have a uh, two type of uh, inference mechanism so in the inference mechanism we have a uh, forward channings and uh, backward channings so forward channings is depends on the data it solely depends on the data to build the forward channings uh, uh so-called inference uh, mechanism you need to correct all the possible data bits. the data here refer to the database the observations okay for forward channings is heavily depends on the data that you collect so how it works we have to scan through all the every single rules uh, from the data so once match then we are going to fire the particular rules and we won't use that rules anymore so only uh, rules any rules can be only executed one time huh? rules can be executed only one time you look at these examples assuming that we have this uh, observations here a b c d e we have only five observations okay in the cycle number one we have to go through rules by rules so this is forward chaining forward chaining we have to collect uh, as much uh, data as possible here then we do a scanning scan rules number one y and d do we have y no we don't have y here so we go to rules number two x b do we have x here we don't have x so don't don't look at this x huh? this x is later one we have only a b c d e okay we don't have x so we skip rules number two we go to rules number three a yes we have this condition a so a give you x so this x is the output so this output here will then add into your database for the second cycle later okay look at the false rules do we have c yes we have a c here so we fire so we get an l so x and l will be the latest observations that store inside your your database your observations okay we have a two latest observation x and l here okay finish no more so this is done uh, cycle number one then we go to cycle number two the moment we repeat the cycle number two we have to rescan again all the rules here okay so start with the rules number one why do we have why no we don't have why for this at this moment okay so we go to rules number two x b e we have x b and e here that's why it's correct so we have a y so y will later store inside the observations so this is your latest uh, database finish go to last cycle 
Okay, Y and D. Now, at this moment, we have a Y and D here. So that's why Y and D fulfill, give you Z. So this is the latest observation. So do we have L and M? No. So that's why the final conclusion will be equal to Z. It means that given a condition A, B, C, D, E, the output will be Z. Okay? So if you look at this example, uh, as a, uh, we would like to diagnose the disease. Assuming that you have a three rules here, okay, you have a three rules. If a patient has a sore throat and suspect a bacterial infection, uh, then the patient had a strep throat. So you have these two conditions, give you this strep throat. You have a rules two, you have a temperature more than 100 degrees Celsius, you have a fever. Third rules, you have a two conditions, sick over a month and fever, give you a bacterial infection. Okay, so how to start? We will always start from the observation. Okay, we scan through rules number one. Is this rules number one correct? So we fire rules number one? No, right? Because we don't have we don't have a bacterial infection. Then we ignore rules number one first. We go to rules number two. But patient temperature is more than 100, is it? Yes, we have one observation here. So it means that rules number two is correct. Rules number two is correct. So we are going to add this fever into our new observed fact first. So we check rules number three. Do we have a fever for this? Uh? We look at the uh, current observed fact. So this is later one. We, we are not going to check. So we just check these three. So rules number three also not fire. So we have only rules two fire. Once the rule two is fire, then we are going to eliminate the rules two for the next cycle. So rules 2 is no more, okay, no more here. So we have a latest observed fact, we have a four observed fact here. So we check rules number one. Patients have sore throat, uh, yes. Bacteria infection we don't have, yeah. So rules one, ignore. We check rules number three. Sick over one month, yes, fulfill. A uh, fever, yes, fulfill. Then we have bacteria infections. Okay, so this bacteria infection we then add it into a new observed Okay, so once rule 3 has expired, then we can ignore, we left rules number 1. Okay, we have this observed facts, we check again. Do we have sore throat? Yes. Do we have a bacterial infection? Yes. Okay, so we fulfill these two conditions, the, condi the, the so-called the conclusion is strep throat. So we can make a conclusion that this patient has a strep throat, based on the observations. Okay. So this is forward chaining, so we just based on the facts and then just scan through each of the rules. Okay, good. So, uh, however, the limitation for forward chaining is uh, we have to gather all the information or the data first. Okay, so that's the limitation. In, in the real life situations, no, not always we can, can get so many data. Okay, we have limited data. If you have a limited data, then you can consider to use a backward chaining. Backward chaining is a technique to uh, to prove the hypothesis instead of to scan through all the every single rules. Okay, we try to prove the hypothesis. In this case, type, uh, data or the observation is not really important in the backward chaining. So in the backward chaining, we just based on the goal. We set a goal first. We try to uh, check the rules. Okay, if in order to achieve this rule, what kind of condition do we need? Okay, let's say you want to achieve, uh, you want to score, uh, uh, you, want to, you want to pass AI. So in order to pass AI, you have to pass the crossword mark and the finals. Okay, and then you try to check with the condition. In order to uh, pass the uh, crossword, you need to pass the midterm and assignment. Okay, in order to pass the assignment, you need to do what? So based on the goals, you trace back the condition. In order to achieve this, you need to achieve this condition. Okay, you need to fulfill a certain condition. So if you look at this uh, case, assuming that we have this A, B, C, D, E, same as the previous case, okay? So assuming that we know our targets, we want to know that based on these symptoms, we want to prove whether based on these symptoms, does this patient are uh, infected with the disease Z or not? Okay, we start a goal first. In order to show that, in order to prove that these uh, patients have the disease called Z, we need to prove that this patient has these two symptoms, Y and D. Okay, but however, in our database, we don't have Y, but we have a D here. So we can set the Y as our sub goal first. Okay.
Okay, in order to prove the why, in order to prove the why, we go to the second one. In order to prove the why, we have to prove that this patients having this symptom X, B, and E. However, we do we do not have X here, but it's okay. We still can prove it through the rules here. In order to prove X is true, we have to prove that the patient has A as the symptom. Okay, so now we check in our database, do we have A? Yes. If once A, we have a database here, then we can go through the step number four. We can prove that the patient have A. Since the patient have A, then it proves that it has the X here. Since the patient has the X, we can backtrack. Okay, has the X, B and E, it have a Y. So you have a Y and D and give you a Z. So we backtrack. In order to identify these patients uh, infected with the disease Z, we try to find out what is their conditions. So in this case, although we don't have the uh, conditions Y, we don't have a condition X, we still can prove that this patient's infected disease Z. Okay, we go back, back, uh, backward. Okay, so yeah, simple example here. So the goal is to decide whether freeze is green. So based on the rules containing the following four rules. So we want to prove that. Okay, we have a hypothesis. Our hypothesis is to prove whether freeze is green color. So uh, we don't look at the factors. We straight away jump to the rules. Which rule having a output green? Okay, the third one, the root rules. Okay. So in order to prove that X is green, we have to prove X is a frog. So do we have a frog inside our database? No, it's okay. We try to find the fact from the rules. In order to prove that X is frog, we have to prove X crooks and X is fries. So now check our database. Yes, we have these two conditions. That's why we can make a conclusion that fruit is green, is true. Okay. Although we don't have a, although we don't have a so-called conditions X is a frog, but we still can prove that X is green uh, based on the rules given. Okay, is that clear? All right. So this one you can go through uh, yourself. Okay. So yeah. So same lah. Uh, this one is back uh, backward channels. We we set the target first. We want to test whether uh, the patients uh, is infected with the. Uh, track throat, so we go back tracking uh. Okay. Yeah. So eventually, this one we can prove that uh, the patient has a track throat. Although even only one uh, observation, we can prove it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when to choose forward chaining and backward chaining? So it depends on, uh, it depends on your uh, so called your data set. If you have enough uh, data. Or the observations, then you can select the forward channels. If you have a limited uh, da uh, data or the observation, then you choose a backward channels. Okay, yes, that's it for the expert system. Yeah. I would say the expert system is among the all the simplest one, uh, it's just based on the logic thinking, based on the internal rules. Okay, so any questions so far for our expert system? Finally, all back up. Okay, finish that song for today. All backup already. I'm so sad. Okay, any questions? If no questions, then um, again, uh, please uh, yeah, rush for your assignment. Uh. You have uh, how many days left? Uh? For Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Five days. Okay, so um, um, formal wear. Uh. You have to wear formal. Uh. And uh, each team will be given only about uh, 30 minutes. Okay, so you have to make sure you have to think about 30 minutes, uh, including set up times. I know uh, sometimes you set up, you take 10, 10 minutes, sometimes you take 5 minutes. You can use the PC inside the lab, uh, the, the, our, our lecture PC, but you have to uh, plug in uh, using our laptop. And then you, you want to prepare the slide, then you prepare, it's okay. Uh, it depends if you are using Python, then you submit Python file. If you are using some, uh, let's say, let's say you are doing a uh, chatbot, you are uh, having a dialogue flow, then you don't submit uh, the files. Probably you have to submit your, your so called your username and also ID lah, so that I can log in and, and, and check. Okay, it depends on your assignment topic.
you you uh, you can save as the Python file lah. Then you submit the Python file. Uh, uh, due to the presentation style, uh, I will leave it to you. you if you want to present through the Python notebook, can it's up to you. Then you generate a simple maybe the output, the input, the the the, the GUI simple. Or you want to uh, have a very uh, bombastic UI, can it's up to you. You can present through the site. Start you start from the site first, okay? Can also. And also, uh, you have a let's say you have a three uh, members, then you divide up equally. How you how you want to present? Who start first? So make sure that you finish within the time given. You are given thirty minutes, then you have to finish within thirty minutes. Because each practical is about one hours. It will take uh, other people time, so you may delay other people's uh, your presentation time as well. Okay. So uh, if your your class, let's say your presentation started at five, then you probably have to come earlier, uh, maybe four fifty five, and then start to set up everything. So. Okay. So uh, I I think I have already uh, put in the the time uh, for each of these groups. If your name is still not inside the uh, Excel so file, please uh, fill in your names. If you submit only documentations and the prototype without presentation, is considered fail also. I make sure that you you do a presentation. Okay. So how to find the presentations? Uh, yeah, I think uh, you can uh, go to the Google Classroom. So if your name is not here, you quickly go and put the name so that I can sign the time for you. If otherwise, it means that you are, you are, you are going to skip the presentation. Okay. I think you have a few in, Riz. I know you are few in today. Eh? Okay. I noticed some students they know you have few in. Eh? So please make sure that you done it by by today or tomorrow. Else, uh, I will assume that you are going to uh, give up on this presentation. Okay. So uh, for this week, as I mentioned, there will be no more practical class. But uh, however, I will use the practical class to discuss the midterm test. Okay. All right. Any more questions? Uh, same goes to the your BMCS. Huh? No questions. Then that's all for today's. Uh, have a nice day. Uh, yeah. See you uh, during the practical class. Okay.